chapter 3. We were reminded this morning that we are not to love the world. That in the world there is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And that's not of the Father, but it's of the world. The world passes away. The, the world passes away, and the lust thereof. But, that, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And then John reminds the children of God, the little children, they were people who were newborns. They, they were only nourishing probably on the meat of the Word. They hadn't grown uh, a lot. But he was telling them it was the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, he was warning them about the Antichrist. And we need to still be warned today that the Antichrist will come. And there are Antichrists in the spirit, in, in the world already. They were here even when Jesus was on earth. But let's look at God's amazing love. In chapter 3 of 1 John, ask Brother Joe if he will, if he will open this by going to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We love your yes, word. Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you bless yes, our Lord. brother. Lord, we ask you to open the eyes of the understanding, Lord, that they might, un he might understand the scriptures and teach thy word in the power and the demonstration of your spirit. Lord, that your spirit may yes, go out, O oh, Lord, according to your word and convict the hearts of those that are in sin that they might come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For your words are spirit and your words are life, Father. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. In the third chapter of, of Little John, I call it Little John, he's talking about God's amazing love. He goes on to say, Behold, look, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We have never saw him with our natural eyes. Our hands have never handled of him. The only way that we have to know him is by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And one day we will see that evidence. And we will meet the evidence of God's love. But God, John 3.16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's the love of God. That's the love of the Father. Said, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. God was willing to let his son be crucified and die to be the ultimate sacrifice that would take away our sins. And when we have accepted that by faith and through grace, then we are born into the family of God. We have become heirs and joint heirs with Christ Jesus, who is our mediator, our elderly brother, and we have now been adopted and become the sons of God. And John is saying here, look, look what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. See, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. But, beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, 
we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And John goes on to say, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. I know that we have been cleansed by faith through grace. We've been cleansed in the blood of Jesus. Our sins have been washed away. But it's just like in the natural life, we can wash and wash and wash, but if we handle things, then we become dirty again. It's a constant cleansing. It's a constant uh, keeping our hands clean, our bodies clean. As we keep our bodies clean, we have to keep our spirits clean. John says, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. We are purified by faith through grace in the blood of Jesus by the word of God. The word of God is a cleanser. It cleanses us. It teaches us. It shows us the things that we need to not touch and handle and become a part of, but to separate ourselves and through the word and the power of sanctification. But there, there's some things that we have to do ourselves. See, Paul, uh, John said here that every man that have this hope in him purifieth himself. We have to do something. We have to refrain ourselves from becoming partakers of this world, becoming partakers of fulfilling the lust of our flesh, the lust of our eyes, the pride of life which is not of the Father, but it's of the world. We, are, we have been instructed through God's word to come ye out from among them and be separate, thus saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean. And we know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither knowing him. I'd like to insert something here because people do have book knowledge. They have common knowledge. But along with having common knowledge and saying, yes, I know there is a God who was the creator. I know that God had a son. And I know God sent his son. And I know, I know there's angels. I know it's this and I know it's that. We have the knowledge that they're existing but do we have the spiritual knowledge of really knowing who He is? There is a difference. When we're born of the Spirit, when we've been born again, we come unto the knowledge, the spiritual knowledge of really knowing who He is. And knowing and having and feeling that relationship with Him. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses the law. the law. For sin is a transgression. For sin is the transgression of the law. And we know that we was manifest, that he, Jesus, was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. And whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither knoweth him. Because we know that the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit is able to keep us and we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. If we have received that, then we are sealed, we are kept, we are covered, then why would we be sinning? Does it make sense? Do we take time to look and see what John is saying? Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Now we can choose to step out from him and choose to go a different way and walk back into the transgressions of this world and then back into sin. But if we really love him and we stay with him and follow him and abide in him, and this is the key, we must abide in him. Because yes. whosoever abideth in him, John said, sinneth not. 
And whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And he that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And if we have accepted Christ into our heart and been drawn by the Holy Spirit of God and, and, and we have confessed our sins to God and asked Him to come into our hearts by faith through grace, we have been born again. We've been cleansed. We've been forgiven. And if that's really took place in our life, then we're not going to be going around just committing sin all the time. And people that do that, they're of the devil. Let's, let's face the truth about it. And we have, when we all know the devil sinned from the beginning. This was the purpose. This was the reason the Son of God was manifest. That's why He was sent. That's why He came. That He might destroy the works of the devil in us. John said, Whoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth righteousness is not. And the children of the... Let's see, let me back up here. Whosoever is born of God doeth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. Because... He's born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. John said, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate thee. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because the love of the brethren he that loved not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and he knoweth not what he knoweth not. He knoweth no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby precede we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we are to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus on his Son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment and he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him he in him and hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given unto us
But he goes on to tell them and to tell us as we read the word. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world, and I have to say amen to that. I mean, that's the gospel truth. It's best that we have the true spirit of God and have the spirit of God dwelling in us because he is the revealer. He's the one who gives us discernment to discern the right spirit from the wrong spirit. But hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. And whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, and again, how many times does he tell us? Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only Son, begotten Son, into the world that we might believe through Him. Live through him. I mean, live through Him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. Listen, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and God dwell in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love of God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because he is he is so are we in this world there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love we love him because he first loved us if a man say i love god and hateth his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. And may I leave that thought with you this evening. Let us be the perfect example. Let's be the prime example that God wants us to be. Let us love one another. There's so much hatred in this world. Families can't even love one another. Even their fleshly brothers and sisters, they can't love one another because of the evil and the wickedness in their lives. But if we have the true divine love of God in our heart, we can love one another because that's where we manifest the love of God is toward other people with that same love. Excuse me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the word this evening.
We thank you, Father, for the instructions that John has given unto the little children. And, Father, how all the plan of salvation has been laid before us. And we have been given the understanding of the statutes and commandments and the laws of God our Father. Help us, Almighty God, to be true to your laws, to your rules, to your statutes, to your commandments. And yes, Lord, we thank you that you are the Lord of our life, that God is the Father, Jesus Christ is the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for these that make us who we are. Help us, Lord, to stay true to you. Help us, Lord, to love one another. Let us love our brothers. Let us love one another. And, Father, may that love continue to dwell in our hearts. And may the world see Jesus in us, that before it's too late, that they will surrender their heart and life unto you and receive from you the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. And to God be given the glory, honor, and the praise. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Yes.